everybody. What's up? I missed y'all. Sorry, I thought it out there. Um, no excuses on why I've been missing. I've been actually going through a healing, like, this cold and stuff. You know, I don't have a cold, praise God, but I've been getting a cold. Well, I had a cold, and I'm, I think I'm getting the residuals that's coming out or what have you. And I said, Daddy, I missed them. You know, Even if it's a written form, I said, Lord, I have fun. Let's talk to them. <laughs> you know, but um, during that time, the Lord has been ministering to me, just encouraging me. Because sometimes, you guys, I will admit that I do get in you know, discouraged. Yeah, and the Lord comes and encourages me. And today, I was taking a shower prior to me getting on here because I already knew what the Lord wanted me to say, what we're about to do now. And that was the Lord's will. I was in the shower and the spirit that I dropped in my, my spirit, the story of uh, Gideon, and that's out of Judges 6. And at that very moment, I said, okay, Daddy, I remember years ago, the Lord gave me a, a revelation within that how the mighty man of God, he asked God, he basically put him up to the challenge and he tried him, so to speak, and he, he was like, so can allow this you can wet the fleet fleet yes please then I know that you're God or know that you're gonna move that's kind of like he was asking for signs and God continuously do it and I think he did like a couple times it was for dry and then wet from wet to dry and what have you and make a long story short God was able to be glorified and magnified with him amen so sometimes when I feel as if like daddy I don't want to necessarily put you up to the challenge but I can put you up to the challenge. So you tell me to try you and see that you, you don't open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I have no room to contain. That's what the Bible says out of Malachi 3. So I said, okay, Lord. I think that's why that motivates me as well to always be a constant and a continual um, fruitful server, uh, fruitful sower and just do it at the kindness of my heart to know that, yes, a blessing is there, but just to know that's my way of honoring my father and saying, Daddy, despite everything, I don't care if I got a bill due, Daddy, I will honor you. I will always honor the the um, the process of seed time and, um, seed time and harvest. I watched my mom do that. I don't know if I ever showed, shared that with you all. We were at World Changer. I grew up watching my mom have her big old Bible, somewhere like this. She had her tabs, and she she walking having us there, and she she said she used to always stick a um she don't care what happened she always had her envelope in the um her Bible and making sure that it was always in the forefront of her mind to always sow into the kingdom of God. And my mom and I we were talking about something a couple days ago, and she said, I am so honored to have daughters, she's like my sister and I, Didi, of how we love God, we're worshipers of Christ, and I said, you know, when she said that we're ornaments and jewels around her neck, and she always declared that, and I think about it, and I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to see, well, for my mom to see that her fruit has not been in vain, like, when she, to see that she's sown, she's sown in good ground, I mean, of course, she still be hollering at us sometimes, but overall, we, st we trust and we know that God is real, you know, I just thought that was so good to encourage, um, for any, uh, mother and even anybody, if you're a father or dad as well, never give up on your children, they, you may think that they're not listening, because I know them times when I was being rebellious, I was still watching and listening, and I was like, whatever you do, I do, so I was following suit with my mom, even if it was correct, so to speak. I said, okay, Daddy, I can follow you and I can rock with you with that, you know. But now, I know in my knower and my knower, if my mom is in error, yes, I follow her, but she's in error. One, I'm going to go and pray for my mom, my sister. She's my sister in Christ first, you know. But I love my mom so much. I'll go lay my, I'll literally, like, lie my, my uh, lay my uh, life down for my brother. 
that's what the Bible tells us. We have to lay our lives down for brother. If our brother and you know, if we see someone that's in error, you know, you just don't be real haughty. But God showed me this in a dream. God showed me in the word, you know, because quickly sometimes the word of God that the yes the Lord may have shown you um, about somebody's error. Not so much to be boastful, but yes, to pray. And sometimes he might be even convicted and speaking to you too. You know, and even me just reading this this uh, moment of Gideon, I've always said I was a bold Christian, a believer of Christ, and I still am. But I have found myself just kind of being worn out, I can say, being almost weary and feeling discouraged and feeling as if, like, my work is in vain. But then quickly the Spirit of God, and I thank Him for being such an encourager and giving the Word of God a, a proper and due season. And this this is a proper and due season this hour. And I said, okay, Lord, thank you for just even being so connected, if I can use that word, and just truly understanding where I'm at in my life in this hour. Like I said, I'm being very transparent with you guys. It's really like... I'm at a place now to tell somebody. I said, I don't even have a vision for myself anymore, if that makes sense. Because I'm quick to say my vision board is on the sins, which it is. You know, the Bible tells me to write down my vision, make it plain. I said, Daddy, I've done that. And which means we write it over. I've done everything that I, to me, that makes me feel honest. And I'm being so honest with y'all. When it comes about a, um, a vision board, I've done the... I, I use the photo grids and making my vision on board of how I want to see things and how I view what I declare. I wrote down uh, declarations. I wrote down everything I wanted, Daddy. I wrote it in front of my Bible. Daddy, what's, what else? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with y'all. And I can I think that's why I can relate to Gideon. And I said, but Daddy, I don't want to be like a Thomas where I have to seek to believe. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. Is more in the fact where I said, Daddy, you said in your word that you will bless those who diligently seek you. And I said, Yes, God, I see everybody that's around me is getting blessed. What about me? You know, and I have to ask the spirit of God. I've been, especially now, I've been rebuking the spirit of jealousy and envy and stuff. And the Lord always will remind me, even about my medicine. And I said, You know what, Daddy? You know how long, y'all, I've been waiting to get some form of help. And now I have it. I literally feel like. I met, I don't know if you all grew up watching this show called uh, Sweet Life with Zach and, Zach and Cody. And at that time when it came, I asked my family and I were living in the hotel because we ended up having a, a house fire. And make one story short, I feel like them where I have, what do you call it, um, room service ability when it comes about my medicine. I could easily call my insurance company like, hi you guys, um, I'm running low on this. And they said, oh, okay, great. Thank you for calling. You, um, how do you say it? You said that your, uh, your, your, uh, your medication has been, uh, you sent, we saw your invoice, something like that, and that your medication is, is free without no charge. And I was like, what? Bad. So that's the blessing of the Lord. And I think to us as well, it's always tangible. But then I'm still thinking like, Lord, you know what your your blessing to me is as well? My mom and I will talk about that. It's salvation. And it sounds good, but like salvation is all. And I was like, well, I definitely grew up just like that. I, don't, I mean, of course, salvation, that's like our fact. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. But when I made a correct, and you all don't knock me, but when I made, um, I made a correct decision, and I said, Daddy, I trust you. Daddy, I'm going to continuously go where you go. Your God will be my God type thing. I already knew that the blessings were already attached to me. So I was like, okay, Lord. So well, people be like, oh, if salvation is everything. Yeah, it is because it's tied to the blessing of the Lord, which that is a blessing. So amen. So I hope I didn't confuse anybody. If I did, please forgive me. I repent. So yeah, so tonight um, i just been, um, actually these last couple of days, um, the Lord is really having me just to really uh, meditate on Psalm 22. It is a story behind that. So, yeah. So, going back to my insurance company. Again, I'm so grateful for them. They are such an amazing um, insurance company. And how they're covering 
they're on the outside. They give you an option with you get pharmacy and you get um over the counter. Praise God. And make long story short, my insurance company they give me a two hundred dollar balance or a two hundred dollar budget. Excuse me. Every three um, months, I think it's every quarter. And you know me being a couponer, kind of trying to be saving. I can stretch that. But the thing is, this time around, I only had, I know spending some, uh, using some of my budget to, of course, get my, my necessities and stuff like that. And make a long story short, I end up getting what I needed that came up. Because it was, I had $43 left. And I said, oh, bet, we got to hurry up and use this before my new quarter comes on, come around. And um, so I have $43. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, Daddy, what do I need? So I went down the list. I used their little, they're not little, but they're uh, what they have in their inventory. And I was like, okay, don't need that, don't need that. But then I found something. Then I found something else. Then I found something else. I said, okay, Lord. But then as I got to the third item, I said, Yana, you can use that next time you get your money. <laughs> but the thing that made me laugh, though, is it wasn't adding up right. I would have nine dollars left. I said, "No, nah, y'all just chill." So I didn't get my last um, thing of jigger, but I did get two more. I got two items, and in my mind, I said, "Okay, y'all." So, make long story short, I only had twenty um twenty two dollars left in my account, and I kid you not, I I, I, I prom not promise, but I kid you not. So twenty two dollars to me is I can stretch that, so I can. You know, do that or whatever. So it reminded me of Psalm 22, and it was like 22 kept being smart. I don't get caught up in neurology. I mean, we call it um, numerology, and that number came up in my um, in my leftovers of what I had left in my account for the end of the month. And then it was a lady out of nowhere. She just liked me my something I posted a tweet, and I was like, hey, somebody at least might kind of seeing my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> but her thing was I am poetry 22 and I said God 22 what are you saying 22 okay so then I just went to uh, Psalm 22 so I know I feel like I just took you all around a big circle but it's going to be very significant so I'll be reading out of Psalm 22 and the subtitle of this is why, ha- why have you forsaken me when I tell you this thing hit my spirit was again going back and feeling as if that had been forsaken like the Lord is not looking at me of course he gave me a blessing in my finest I said dad I repent if I'm having a murmuring and complaining spirit because before 10 years ago I was being stuck at Grady and for 12 hours for them to say nothing pretty much sometimes they used to admit me and then sometimes they would send me home with some medicine so I'm just grateful for the process of it all you know but anywho, so we're going to be reading from Psalm 22 out of the ES version. And the Bible says out of verse 1, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Mm-hmm. Verse 2, Oh my God. And Lord, I'm not saying it, uh, but I am using my scripture. <laughs> I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. You know, I'll stop right there. Because typically, like, I tell my doctor, and I'm like, I'm not getting any rest light. And they're like, is this something you're going? Or are you thinking about something? And I spoke to my counselor. She's like, are you stressing? And I was like, no, nah, I'm still staying on uh, Psalm 4 and 6. And she was just like, man, I want you to be really honest with yourself. And just sit down and just really understand. Well, she didn't necessarily say it, but that's how I was kind of interpreting what she was stating. Of, man, I'll just sit down and just understand why you're feeling like that. Just rest. That's what I was interpreting. Yes. So then verse 3, um, the Bible says, Yet you are holy and thrown on the praises of Israel. Your people. And I put that in parentheses. And Jesus saying, you guys remind me, uh, forgive me, me and my little uh, baby crown thing is for that part. <laughs> and then the Bible says in verse 4, in you, my fathers trusted. Mm-hmm. They trusted and you delivered them. So now this time, 
David is upset. He like, man, my dad, his dad, his dad, his dad, they all trusted. Um, and you and you delivered them. What's up with me? And then verse five, the Bible says to you, they cried and were res- uh, rescued. I'll say this too. <laughs> rescued. I'm getting trying to read better, y'all. Y'all see? And you, they trusted and they were not put to shame. Verse uh, six. Yeah. But I am a worm, not me. And I am and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. Verse 7. They all who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. Sucker punch to your face. <laughs> Verse 8. He trusts in the Lord. Let Hold on. Let us read it. Okay. He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him res- rescue him. For he delights in him. Verse 9. Let you. Huh? Yet you are he who t- um, took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. That's my testimony. <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> I grew up watching and listening to my mommy. They taught me faith. In Jesus' name. Through their faith, I learned faith. Amen. Um. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Yep, testimony all day, every day. Verse 11, be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Boo, but it is. God will never leave no, us, no for you to take us. Verse 12, many bulls encamps me. Strong bulls of Bashan, mm-hmm. I had a boyfriend, his name was Bashar, um, surround me. Verse 13, they open wide their mouths at me like a wavering and warring lion. Verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a hot shirt. I don't know how to pronounce that. Y'all don't judge me. And my tongue sticks out, sticks to my jaw. I don't know how to sound. Okay. You lay me in the dust of death. Verse uh, 16. For dogs encamps me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. You know what's so funny? It's so funny we're reading this. This is something just kind of viewing and listening, even thinking about our hope we serve Jesus Christ, and how the Bible says that a company of evildoers encircle me, for they pierce my hands and feet. And you think about at Calvary, they did that to our Savior. They pierced his hands and his feet. Man, that sucks. Jesus, you, you, man. I love serving you, Lord. I tell anybody that's why I go. I never try to pretend like I am the God. I can't, but I am a God through God's promise that the Bible says out of Psalm 82 and 6. Thank you, Mike, for putting me up on game. Like, we, ye are gods in Jesus' name. That's what the Bible calls us that we are the righteousness of God, that we're in right standing with God. And we, I know that sounds so lame, but we carry the glory of God. We are, and the Bible says as well, out of um, Romans 8 and 17, and I'm not throwing out scriptures trying to be um, apologetic, but I just want to set something straight. Like, that's what the Bible calls us. Amen. So I don't know who wants to, needs to hear that, but we are God. You are a God, not the God. Amen. Yay. Verse 17 says, I can count all my bones. Praise God. They stare and gloat over me. Verse 18, they divide my garments among them, and my clothing they cast lots. Verse 19, but you, O Lord, be do not be a, be far off. Oh, you my help, come quickly to my aid. Verse 20, deliver my soul, my mind from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Okay. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have, you know, that thing about something too. It's so cool because you think about the story of um, 
well, the actual, let me see the story, something that really happened with Daniel and the, um, the, the Hebrew boys, you know, of how that they were cast to a, uh, in with the lion, and the Lord kept them. So, amen, I received that. You have rescued, rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. Verse 22. I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst, um, in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Amen. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offering offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. All you offspring of Israel. Verse 24. But he, he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Amen. And he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. Amen. That's good. Me and my little twizzles on top of my head. Amen. Verse 25. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. Amen. Verse 26. The conflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Mm, that's good. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. And this is the, the scripture. I don't know if you all followed me back in the day. Uh, the Spirit of God reminded me of this um, a long time ago in a wig. And the Bible says, All the ends of the earth will shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belong, belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Amen. Verse 29. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down into go, go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Verse 30. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming nation, uh, generation. Verse 31. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Amen. Yeah. And I believe that's the last scripture. So, Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for preparing your children on tonight, Lord, for bringing us into a place where we know that our cries have been heard by you, Lord. This is you said, God, you sent an angel and you told your son that this, the, that very day when he spoke and he prayed, his prayer was heard. So, Daddy, I say thank you that our prayers have been heard, but the devil has sent uh, attacks. And that's why they um, that's why the angels of God have been fighting for those 21 days. So, Father, I say thank you that those 21 days are up in Jesus' name, that our blessing is here, God. Even if it's a word to feed to our spirits to go out and do what the, the Lord has called us and designated us to do in this hour. In Jesus' name. So, Father, I just want to bless you and honor you and bless you even further, God. Oh, Father, I say thank you for the reading of your word, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I say thank you, Lord, for the full understanding of your word is our portion on tonight, God. I magnify you on tonight, God. Hallelujah, Lord. I bless you for every viewer, every listener on tonight, and even those that are watching on the replay in the name of Jesus. I pray that their, that their cups have been full, have became full, if not overflowing, God, by the Spirit of God. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And I plead the blood of Jesus over our homes on tonight, God. Over every doorpost, every window sill, and every doorknob that is in our homes on tonight, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over our fireplaces and our garage doors and every opening that is within our homes, God. Even an opening window, I say thank you for it, <laughs> in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over our electronics on tonight, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that we rededicate our electronics back unto you, Lord, and ask God that you will uh, use it in a full um, use for the kingdom of God's sake in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we repent for using and having um, haughtiness in our hearts because of a, a particular brand or 
how often that they are able to that we're often able to get new cases and you know like the little small stupid stuff that we think that are that makes us look glamorous and good but the devil is a liar i thank you and i honor you god that you're humble you said in your word that you will humble those that are exalted and you will exalt those that have been um been hold on i said that's so weird you said that you will humble those that have been exalted and you will exalt those who have been humbled in jesus name but i thank you that this is definitely the hour again god it's always been an hour for the underdog i thank you for the underdog in jesus name that we are the head and not the tail and that we are above and never beneath in the name of jesus i take a story of the spirit of poverty a spirit of being uh false humility on tonight in jesus name i thank you for that it's going to be a true um a true heart that will be able to be given back unto you lord i do say thank you on tonight lord use us the best way you know how but you know how to do everything so i just thank you <laughs> in jesus name lord i plead the blood of jesus over your creation of our dogs on tonight i thank you even to over the um, little flies and you know even like i was praying about the rats and the roaches and the mice i don't understand their purpose but thank you jesus not like snakes and stuff i don't understand them but they're here so we have to deal with it huh so god thank you for them too <laughs> and heavenly father lord that you please forgive us of every sin that we have committed for or against you knowingly or unknowingly in every thought and every deed and even it was perceived as a sin lord i ask that you wash us clean and make us new on tonight god even when we're sleeping, God, I just thank you for bestowing up upon us dreams and visions that's from you and not from Satan, giving us those perverted dreams in Jesus' name. I say thank you, Lord. I thank you for the purity in our mindsets and our hearts, God, that we have already exalted, um, given unto you, Lord, for your use, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you encamp the angels around about us on tonight, keeping us from any hurt, harm, or danger, Lord. I rebuke and I bind any premature death in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that the death angel has already passed away because the blood is there. Just as you, you commanded the Israelites in the, the time with Moses. You commanded them to put the blood of the lamb over their doorposts. So, Father, we say thank you for teaching us that principle again. To continue to put the blood over our doorposts in Jesus' name. So, Father, I just want to say thank you, and I honor you, and I bless you. And I fill this prayer with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alrighty, you guys. I love you all so much to the fullest to my ability. Yeah, but I will speak to you all very soon. And, yeah. Toodles. Love y'all. Follow me as I follow Christ.